Hey Aries, welcome to your July 2020 reading. This is for Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus signs. As always, I'm going to start off with your general energies for the month, and then we'll move on to the Romance Angel Oracle cards for your love life reading for singles and couples. Thank you guys so, so much for all the love and support. Thank you for everything. Those of you that have booked readings, that um, have sent me donations, have emailed me, I absolutely appreciate each and every one of you. Let's get to it. Aries Sun Moon Rising signs for your general energies for July 2020. If you are new to me, welcome. Thank you guys so much for clicking and sticking around. If this doesn't resonate, the general reading, remember you can always skip ahead to the love life portion and see if that one resonates with you. So Aries Sun Moon Rising signs, general overall energy for July 2020. Oh my God, I swear, you guys are like the third or fourth sign that got that card. I just did Libras, they got that card. Um, who else got it? Maybe Aquarius. Financial constraints. Some of you may be in this um, situation. There's two uh, storylines here because I feel that some of you uh, during this time, uh, if you are going through some hardships, you are feeling a bit like you don't have enough, enough money, enough resources, enough stability financially or within the home. Others of you, I feel that you're the one that's got their shit together, right? And you have someone that's close to you that I don't want to say mooching off of you. Uh, for some of you, maybe that may be the case, but I feel like they, it's almost like they make you feel bad for having your shit together just because they don't have theirs. I mean, it's kind of lame, right? All tied up. Okay, this might be somebody that you may be involved with romantically or financially, uh, like a business partnership, maybe going through... Um, some of you may be going through like a divorce, a separation, something along those lines. Um, but I also feel that some of you, maybe you have your money tied up in investments that you don't have access to at the moment. Uh, or this is something that somebody is coming to you saying that and almost expecting you to help them out, right? Like they're waiting for their unemployment. They're waiting for their bonus, their, you know, stimulus. They're waiting for, um, I'm like a retroactive check or something, an inheritance. They're expecting some form of money to come in. Yeah, and it's not getting to them fast enough. And they're fully, fully expecting you to take care of them and support them. If you think they're going to pay you back when they have this money, that's going to be a no. I don't feel that they're going to be fair about it. It doesn't mean they may not give you anything. Um, it just may be one of those, I'll pay you back when I get the money, and then maybe they don't get as much money as they think they're getting, and they have other expenses, and then it's like, I hope it's okay, I can only give you part of it. Um, and like, what can you say? Because at that point, you want some over none, right? So, yeah, I, I can... You really want this person to get their shit together, right? Especially if you're dealing with a water sign. Um, also, like I said, I just did Libras. They had that. Uh, I believe Aquarius did too. I believe Aquarius had that one. Libras had some major financial stuff. So if you have Libra in your chart or um, you're involved in some sort of legal thing in regards to money, family, partnership, check out that Libra reading. I'll link it up here. Um, and maybe check it out. Hmm. If you're the one that's financially backing someone, business or otherwise, you already know what you're getting yourself into here. They can be a bit flaky, wishy-washy, not very dependable. You know that, <laughs> look at that. You know that if you give them some money, you may not get it all. They probably owe you and a lot of other people more money that they can possibly pay back. Um, it's like they're constantly keeping themselves in this financial hold. Um, 
they spend more than they make. You may be the mother. This is your adult son, grown son, somebody like this. You need to take on this energy of, you know, I'm, I'm, I can't give you any more money, son. I can't give you any more money, you know. It's just son, daughter, whatever it may be, child, relative, brother, sister, brother, whatever it might be. I just can't. You're going to have to figure this out because the more I give, the more you take and now you're going to leave me depleted and I've got to hold on to whatever money I have coming in, especially during this pandemic, uh, especially if you have children to care for. Um, a specific situation you've got to hold the fort down this person is gonna like kind of throw a fit at you like how dare you how dare you do this to me and they're going to guilt you and you might you might spend some time feeling a bit withdrawn and depressed because they're making you feel guilty for not helping them out but you're not their bank they've left you depleted financially emotionally uh especially if this is someone with addictions drinking drugs gambling shopping codependencies this feels like a very unstable unsteady energy You may have to bail someone out as well. Libra also got this one. But you also feel tied and bound to this situation. Like no matter what, you're forever going to bail this person out of every financial trouble and struggle that they have. You may care about them, love them, whatever it may be. I mean, like the bottom of the deck underneath is the bank. They see you as their own personal bank and... If you're not their mother or their baby mama, it may have been that they were treating their mother like this and now you are the next one in line to inherit that problem. Or maybe it's like asking the mother-in-law for money, asking, <sighs> robbing Peter to pay Paul. They owe money to a lot of people. Yeah, see? Older woman, mother, mother-in-law, grandmother, whatever women in their life, this could be you or someone else, but I feel like the envy I see here is the need for balance and peace and not having to worry about if you have enough money for you because you decided to help someone out and whether or not you should be worried about somebody else having enough money for themselves because they're not your responsibility and you know even if they are your grown children or friend family member that you feel responsible for you're enabling this continuous cycle of financial constraints and debt and you feel tied and bound to the situation. I mean, all tied up. Eight of Swords and the Prison Card. Like you're never going to get over it or you're never going to get past it. There's a conversation that needs to take place. And there it is again about the finances in the home, within a partnership, relationship. Um, whether you're involved with this person romantically or not. This is someone that may be leaning on you. Um to get through financially it's got you feeling very withdrawn and you know you can't even enjoy whatever money you have because they come back asking you for money and it's like well you just bought yourself this and it's like bitch that's my money who gives you the right to like stake claim in my hard-earned money in my you know whatever finances you know that i might have what's that got to do with you just because i've bailed you out so many times and it's unfortunate but you keep feeding into that cycle it's never going to end so aries let's see what's up with your love life aries singles and aries couples sun moon rising and venus sign july 2020 
let go of control issues for the singles may have one for the couples keep an open mind your soulmate may differ from your usual type and expectations okay singles let go of control issues allow the situation to unfold naturally so if you're dealing with someone that does have financial issues whether they're your partner business partner love life partner there's something here that weighs heavily on you you know wanting someone to get their shit together you not wanting to bail them out anymore you don't know that maybe they've asked other people for money and so now it's kind of like well they haven't asked me for money for a while so you automatically assume that they've got their shit together or that they're no longer in need of borrowing money but like i said this person has asked for money around too many people so if this is someone that you have separated from that you've let go of this is someone from your past that probably still comes back in and asks you for money for finances for help with this they don't they don't know how to be self-sufficient self-reliant how to you know it's like they're always in need but this is the type of energy that I feel that they may have grown grown up in that they have been exposed to that has become cyclical their whole life so if they no longer have you know a uh, mother or father parental figure that they can go to to ask for money or even if they do and that bank of parents is closed you know they're trying to get it together they play the victim you know role and you want to help them but at this point you got to help yourself aries you can't you, you know as much as you might care and love somebody at some point you got to cut the cord and let them and let them figure out how to make their own money let them how to figure out how to be a grown-ass person that pays bills that you know takes care of their finances without being consistently in debt you know and they'll guilt you they'll make you feel bad and it will make you feel bad it's a toxic um codependency relationship here um i feel like they see you like this queen of pentacles or you know there's a virgo capricorn taurus around that they may have gone to as well maybe they're bouncing back and forth between the two but the queen of pentacles is someone who's nurturing who's loving who's caring who's you know got their finances in order who knows how to spend wisely and save their money and they may see you like i said bank of aries you got to be careful <laughs> What did I say? You got to be careful with people like that. Bank of Aries. They see you financially set, maybe wealthy, maybe just consistently having enough money to cover what you need to cover, not having to worry about, you know, your financial needs, your bills, your earthly matters. You know, you have no problem having money to go out with friends, to uh, pay your bills, your rent, whatever it may be. And this person is still struggling regardless. And you're just like, when is this going to end? Even if you're single and you broke up with this person, this person is still, you know, somewhat financially codependent with you. Um, they may come in to hook up and ask for money as well. Like, it's like, I feel like it's really, it's a weird thing of it's almost as though they they hold you over with sex I, I know that sounds strange but I feel like it's almost like they ask you for money then like they want to hang out then you guys hook up because they feel like they at least owe you something you know it's it's a really weird balance with that um that's not normal by the way <laughs> queen of cups uh, I believe she came out in the first part as well. So Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio, you may be dealing with. Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. I don't see swords here, so you may not be dealing with an air sign. But the beginning part did have similarities to the Libra reading. Libra and Aquarius. So, yeah, you really just want to be able to live freely. To detach from someone that has been draining you emotionally financially 
Um, you're trying to take back control of your own life, your own happiness, your own financial stability. But it's not going to do it as long as you have somebody that comes in that's financially draining you. This is a really, you know, I wasn't expecting anything like this, Aries. It's a little bit strange for, you know, for all the other readings I've had so far. I was just, I don't know, I was not expecting this. Let's see. Because we need a little truth here with the rebel deck. Some tough love, cold hard truth. What do you need to know? No filter, please, for Aries singles in regards to maybe a codependent friend, ex. It keeps coming in back and forth. What does Aries singles need to know? Laugh. Where the fuck is your sense of humor? It's important because you need a good fucking cry. Get that ugly cry on. Let that shit go. Your soul will thank you. This person, I feel like they feel very overwhelming to you. They drain you of your energy, your balance, your stability. You may feel anxious um, when you think about this connection. When they leave you start to feel guilty and you second guess yourself and how could you you know have gone through that again you've got let go of control issues and don't fucking force it allow that shit to come to you so if you're wondering whether or not this person that keeps coming back in is the one for you um you know you want to see strings attached on both sides is what i see Sure, I'll help you out, but you need to get your shit together and we need to move this thing forward. And I need to know that you want to work things out. I'll help you out as long as I know that we have a future together. But if you're just coming to like hook up, ask for money and then bounce, then peace, I'm out. Go find somebody else that will entertain you in whatever way you're looking to be entertained, right? So if you have to get to the point of needing full control, needing access to this person 24-7, needing to know what their intentions are, you know, because it's only right, you're like forking over your dough, right? If you can't seem to get this on the right path and it leaves you, like I said, emotionally drained, spent, wondering why am I still drinking out of this cup when it's empty get the fuck outside move your ass your body is pissed at you and i'm going to take these two that flipped and then move on okay you think someone is lying guess what aries they are it's not everyone else's fault it's yours you are a grown ass adult. Stop blaming others for your shit. So if you find yourself an emotional discontentment, you've enabled this person, you've made it easy for this person to come back in, you've given this person enough access where they feel that they can come to you no matter what, they make you feel good about yourself. In other words, saying, i.e., you're the only one I can count on. You're the only one that's been there for me for so long. They make you feel good and happy and nice and warm and fuzzy inside for being a good friend. But Aries, ask yourself, have they been a good friend in return? Only you know the answer to that. So couples, keep an open mind. Your soulmate may differ from your usual type and expectation. So if you've just recently met someone, maybe you work with them, maybe, you know, this is someone that is a friend that you've just grown closer to recently, you may not have imagined or expected them to be anything more than a friend or a work connection or anything like that. But the angels are saying to keep an open mind. You may have a specific type, but ask yourself, what do all the exes have in common? Is this person a little more stable than all the people you were with before? 
Is that what the difference is? That you don't need to help this person because they've got their shit together? That they've got their financial affairs in order? That they're responsible? That they're mature? Let's find out. Oh. Page of Wands. In reverse. Strength card. Leo vibes there. Aquarius with the star. King of Cups. Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio. Seven of Wands reversed. Six of Swords. A couple more. There's the Ace of Cups. But the all-seeing eye knows that that cup, if you're not too careful. Ooh, two of cups. Two of pentacles. <laughs> Just finished my sentence for me. If you're not too careful, you may be drinking from an empty cup. I mean, right now it's not empty because you got the ace of cups upright, but you also have the ace of swords. So... Keep an open mind. Page of Wands in reverse. So this some, might be someone a little bit younger than what you're used to, right? And maybe they're a little shy and timid and you're used to maybe somebody being a little bit more bold and, um, okay. This might be someone who's quiet, who's shy, who's timid, who's not um, abrupt in nature who's not like in your face and loud and look at me I'm strong man type thing right like uh, you may have gone out with and I, I'm picturing like big muscular guys kissing their biceps like you, that might be the type of person that you're used to like somebody that's you know all about themselves in their ego and like do you know how lucky you are to be with me type shit and this is somebody who's maybe younger who's a little more shy and timid who might be quiet at first, but they're emotionally strong and they're actually stronger than the type of strong people that you've had in the past. They're very intuitive as well. And they may be a little bit slow in taking those initial steps where you're like, did this guy just flirt with me? Did this girl just, was she flirting with me? You know, where you're not just not sure you might be getting a little bit of mixed signals. But at some point, you realize I really get along with this person. I think, I think I might be feeling something for this person. I think that I can possibly see a future together, but for whatever reason, there's a juggling act here because you have two options. You have maybe someone from your past that keeps coming up, um, but it's time for you to, you know, be honest with yourself and really figure out what it is that you want for yourself, what your real expectations in a partnership are. The, the card of change, I believe Libra also had that. So I suddenly felt a weight on my back. So you may already be in contemplation mode, Aries, about whether or not you should be leaving a specific um, situation, a home, a job, um, a, a home life, um, a career. I just said that twice, didn't I? What the heck? That's an emphasis. Your job might take you to another city, another town, and you're just like, I don't wanna take this person from my past that I've been fucking with back and forth. I want to start fresh and start over somewhere else. Why am I so conflicted about this? Am I not worthy of real connection? You may be asking yourself that. I think you just want to keep moving forward and see where this new job, new home, new city takes you. But I see changing, moving to a different state, or you may just recently have moved to a different state. Um travel some of you may travel overseas or may move towards like lakeside or by water some of you really like being by the water it's there's something soothing about it that brings you peace and i feel like you have these big plans for your future that 
the person that you may have had in your life or has been in and out that's popping up because I feel like if you are in a connection and a relationship, you've met someone new that has, you know, stirred some romantic feelings here. You're wondering if with these changes, if you even want to bring this partner that isn't really working out for you, you're wondering if you want to take them with you. You have the card of thief. So, oh, at work. Listen, don't get into some crazy trouble at work. If you have to get up and move or your partner does because there was some like theft in the workplace. I don't like that. Something not right there. So keep an open mind. This could be the one. Again, if you met someone that's made you, you know, second guess and think twice about whether or not you're in the right relationship. I think some of you have um, suddenly experienced new feelings from someone new and you're starting to reflect and realize and maybe Mercury retrograde resurfaced that's starting to, you know, wonder all this fighting to keep this relationship for what? I'm done fighting. I want to keep moving forward and make myself happy, find my true love. I'm connecting with someone you may be with someone who's quite egotistical and wow this person that you may meet or have met this isn't for everyone obviously not everyone's going to be you know contemplating leaving a current partner but there is juggling here so if it's not you Aries it could be somebody that you've been interested in that you've been dealing with that you may have been in a relationship that is you know, second guessing themselves and wondering about whether or not they're in the right partnership, you know? I saw the dancing celebration here like a third party, but there is some communication that goes out. Yeah, be careful who you trust, Aries. Um, so if you're contemplating leaving somebody, they're going to pretend like they are just absolutely distraught. And yes, I said pretend, or it may be you who has to pretend as though they're absolutely heartbroken for making this decision, but I just can't move on. I just can't do this. I can't do this anymore. I'm absolutely heartbroken all the while you've got a backup plan. This, this, this is either you, Aries, or this is somebody else and you're in between two connections, two people. I feel like you almost feel like this person has just wasted your freaking time and you're just like, no more. I've woken up. I realize this is not the one for me. Aries, this is a little bit of a funky reading. I am going to do a bonus love reading within the next week. I've got some stuff going on, personal readings that are booked. So as soon as I'm done with those, I'm going to start working on the bonus readings for July, August for your love life. So make sure that you are subscribed. Double tap that bell, hit the like button, like, comment, share, and subscribe. That was your reading for July, 2020. Aries, let's hope that your bonus love life reading is better. Have a wonderful rest of the month. Take care. Bye.